Hello YouTube and uh, welcome to my channel. This is a break away from my usual type videos. Uh, no one ever gets to see my face. They hear the commentary, they see my hands, but they don't ever see me. This is your opportunity to actually meet me. Uh, my name is Stan and I, uh, I've gotten to where I kind of enjoy making these little videos for you guys. I've gotten some decent feedback uh, on my channels. Uh, thank you everybody. Uh, and I hope, uh, you know, I, lot, I know a lot of little dumb tricks uh, to make life easier. And I, I hope you enjoy the channel. I, uh, I'm also a very lazy guy. Now, that's not to say that I'm worthless or I sit around and do nothing all day. I have found that, all things being equal, if you give a lazy person a job, they will always find the easiest way to go about it and still complete the task. There's nothing wrong with lazy people, and I am lazy. So, uh, if I've got a way to make a shortcut and still get the same results, I'm going to share it with you. Uh, today I'm just going to talk about tools and storage of tools that maybe are very expensive to buy but possibly don't get used very often. Uh, I myself would not buy a tool without a case. Uh, if it's available in any way. Uh, I, I like nice square or rectangular cases that stack neatly as this, uh, you see this menagerie here in front of you. Um, I'm going to show you a few of them. And the injection molding cases, the, you know, when plastic first came out it was hard and brittle and they weren't making it right. But uh, the injection molded double wall cases are wonderful. It's a little Greenlee knockout set. Uh, the tools stay separated, they don't bang into each other, so they don't, the teeth don't get chipped. The threads on the draw uh, studs stay nice. Um, this thing's been bouncing around in my toolbox for years, uh, in, the, in the truck, in the trailer, in the work trailer. Um, it just, they just stay in really good shape. It's got a nice catch on it, uh, very positive, it's never popped open. It's been crushed, beat, kicked, thrown, dropped, and uh, they're still uh, going strong. Uh, I keep them oiled, and uh, they're just a, that's just a good little set. Um, jigsaw, I got this for Christmas. Thought I might have used it twice. And as you can see, the case is just horrible. It's it's dirty. It's dusty. It's uh, uh, it's bangs around here in the shop. Um, you know, but that tool is as good as the day it was new, right there. And again, double wall, injection molded, nice soft plastic, it creates a cushion for your tool. Um, and you also want to keep in your, t in your tool cases everything you need to care for that tool, whether it be a grease or uh, maybe a little brush to brush it off or uh, Allen wrenches to adjust it or, uh, you know, to spare blades, whatever. Just uh, keep all the accessories with it. So when you, that's, that's, that's huge in time saving. You go put your hands on something and you say, oh, this one takes metric Allen wrenches. Go get my metric set or whatever. When you got them right there, just keep them with the tool. Um, gosh, this is an old, uh, this is an old metal case uh, Sawzall that I bought. I, I literally bought this when I first went in business. That was a 1992 vintage Sawzall, still going just as strong as the day it was new. Uh, keyless chuck, you don't have to fiddle around with the, uh, um, you know, the Allen keys to change the blade. It's just a simple quarter turn. But the metal cases, I, I don't love them. But uh, I tell you, they, uh, they were pretty good back in the day, back before plastic really came about and went, you know, mainstream on us. But, uh, yeah, I don't see any reason why that thing's not going to last another 20 years. Uh, rack of sockets, you know, uh, this is, again, the nice cases. Uh, it's a rack of in impact sockets we use for putting together uh, structural steel. And uh, just keep them all together, keep all your accessories with it. I think I paid an extra four bucks for the case. Completely worth it. This thing would be a mess. Uh, I'd already have sockets missing. They'd be bouncing around in the toolbox. You'd find them whenever, wherever. But you'd never, certainly never, be able to find them when you need them. I was 
starting to feel guilty about my old Milwaukee. So I started carrying a spare. And a spare Milwaukee. And uh, that thing runs good too. Again, with the injection molded case, real nice cases. Um, this one, I don't have any preference. Man, this thing just works just like my, like my old one. Back when, uh, back when Milwaukee actually meant something. It's not so much anymore, but uh, yeah, good, uh, good cases though. Uh, Bosch rotor hammers, another one you got to carry spares and everything that goes with it. Um, even my uh, called speed core bits those are for drilling. That'll get a two-inch pipe through an eight-inch thick concrete wall. Or brick, or you know, masonry block, or whatever. But it'll it'll core through it. I've, there's a spindle that mounts on this. It's this long, and uh, I've cored through 30 or 40 walls with that. And uh, that's carbide tipped, and you use it uh, with the rotor hammer. And it, uh, gosh, I I don't think it would be intact with all the rubber sleeves and everything with it if I didn't keep it in the case. And with the tool, uh, I keep grease in here. I keep a little brush in here. The splines on these uh, masonry bits uh, need constant lubrication. You always have to clean the concrete dust out of them when you use them. But uh, this is a newer Bosch. Again, I was feeling guilty. Um, I had an older Bosch. That's right below it. And I started feeling guilty that that thing was going to give up on me. So I bought a spare and started carrying both of them. And even the old one hasn't given up yet. So. If you got a hell of a tool, protect it. Same thing, mid 90s, old box. But everything you need inside of it to, to clean out the, uh, the splines on the end and grease it. Listen, I've still got the instructions with this one. But just keep a little tube of grease in there and keep, keep, keep everything in there that you're going to ever need. You don't want to. Uh, end up somewhere where you're looking for one little thing just to make your tool work. Now we got through all the factory cases and uh, now we're up to I'm going to buy something that uh, you can't get a case for. You do that? Well, well Tom over at Ox Tool, I saw him, uh, I caught him on his channel the other day uh, cutting some wood on his bandsaw. Mr. Metal is cutting wood. So, and I do the same thing. And this is just a, any tool that maybe you make or you buy and the case is not available for. You know, make yourself a little, uh, give yourself a little tool holder for it. That, that's a punch and die set that I uh, that I made, and it's got a lot of little pieces. I mean, I, I have to use a little Allen wrench to put them in there. I use uh, I've got the urethane strippers in here that strip the sheet metal off. So that's just a urethane sleeve, um, and, and a lot of little parts that, that need to go with this set. And I've actually got it set up here in the vise. It, all you do is slip a piece of sheet metal in here, pull the handle down, and wow, we, we punched a hole. And there, there's my die there. Each one has its own spring. Here's all the die sets. So each one's got got a hole for the punch. And a hole for the die. So uh, yeah, just uh, like I say, that's just a four by four and a two by four put together with a piano handle. There's nothing. There's no big mystery to that. But all my stuff uh, stays together. Let's get a good look at that. Hopefully, you can see that. And then, uh, like this one, this is, a, uh, this is another tool case I had to make. I'm not the most talented woodworker in the world, but uh, this is just uh, some 2 by 4s and I've got a couple of simple cabinet latches, piano hinge across the back, uh, there's a sheet metal panel in the center where I cut a groove in the 2 by 4 but this keeps my 
uh, Marson uh, nut set tool uh, together. Uh, all my inserts, I've got uh, you know very specific drill bits that I have to use for the inserts, so I've created a slot for those. Um, all the mandrels, so I had to go out and buy a little fishing tackle box with a whole load of mandrels to go in there. Um, and then you know you've got all your special wrenches and things. So I've got a slot for those, and the actual tool itself goes in there. So uh, and so this was a very yeah, it's a pretty complex case to make. And I've got all the, the refills up there on top. And put yourself a sticker in here with uh, all your part numbers for your refills and your mandrels and everything so you know what you need to buy to recharge your kit. And it's uh, it's been an okay little, uh, little box. And uh, you have to find a use after you build it. You're a little proud of it. Not a lot proud of it, but a little proud of it. So you uh, go to the oil bin and grab a rag and soak it with oil and give it an oil finish. Might as well. And this has got a uh, concealed uh, handle. That, uh, so you can put it away. And uh, the handle will be a bit. And in case anyone wants to uh, open it upside down, we give them that reminder. So that's the name of that tune. So let's put this away. Next thing is your tooling that maybe you don't use very often. You know, if it's if it sits on the shelf for uh, two or three weeks um, and I don't even lay a finger on it, I wrap it up and put it away. That's a 5C collet, quick chain collet block, a 90 degree block. Drop a collet in there with a lever. Everyone's seen them. You probably don't have one. But God, I think I used this thing one time. When I was done with it, I took it over the parts washer, I cleaned it, I oiled it, and I wrapped it up in shrink wrap. Simple enough. A uh, yoke tool poles holder that I used in one of my uh, recent videos. I dug it out and uh, re-oiled it, cleaned it all up, and threw some shrink wrap around it. Uh, another tool post adapter. It's a, this is a ball turning attachment. There's a spindle in there that rotates and I've got a tool that hooks out there and uh, cut, cuts a, a round ball on a lathe. Uh, that's another homemade piece and I just uh, just wrap it up and put it away. So even anything like a spindex or anything you want to put away and uh, you want to you, you spend a bunch of time cleaning it once when you put it when you when you're done with it and uh, oiling it and put it on the shelf and then it attracts every speck of dust in the shop. And then you're going to clean it again when you uh, go to use it. That's just silly. And not to mention you lose stuff like this and little trinkets that are on it, little knobs or little set screws or anything that goes with the tool. Keep the tools together. Keep your uh, knobs and your pins and everything in there. And just insert them and wrap that sucker up. It's pretty simple. I'm not going to show you how to do this. Everyone knows how to work this stuff. It's actually kind of fun. Just the, the stretch wrap. But uh, just wrap them up, put them on the shelf, and they're very easy to unwrap. And you'll see that in my shop quite often, just a whole shelf full of tools that are all wrapped in shrink wrap. They're clean, they're ready to put your hands on, and ready to go to work. So that's my take on tool preservation and tool use and tool storage. Thank you for watching.